Well, hello and uh, welcome. Uh, we're delighted to be able to uh, share in this conversation with John. Uh, and uh, so, John, thank you for just uh, being willing to uh, share some thoughts uh, w with us uh, as you uh, prepare to, to move away from Top Jordan. Uh, and we're just delighted that uh, you're, you're willing uh, to, to do this. Um, uh, maybe first of all, John, can I uh, ask you just about uh, what Club Jordan means to you in terms of your early life and and everything that uh, from your earliest days, uh, any reflections from uh, your earlier times in Club Jordan? Well, I was born in a nursing home in Bangor County Down because my mother was from Northern Ireland uh, and uh, the... the Oh, yeah. The nurses in the hospital knew that uh, my father was a Tipperary man, so they called me Tipperary Tim after a horse that won the Grand National in ten years previously. Uh, um, I was born uh, just three days beyond the the, the two hundredth anniversary of John Wesley's heartwarming experience in Alders Great Street. Mm. My father, who was a fervent Methodist, wanted to call me John Wesley. Armitage. Okay. My, my mother being Presbyterian said I'll go along with that as long as you call him John and not Wesley. Right. Uh, so I uh, grew up in Deer Park in Clark Jordan and I had a sister who came three years after me. Mm. Uh, my parents were very devout and we always had morning prayers seven days a week yeah. uh, which my dad did readings and uh, talked about missionaries and, and, and prayed. So we, we grew up in a, a religious atmosphere and on Sundays we would listen to programs like Silver Chords and Chapel in the Valley on, on BBC before we went to church or okay. Sunday school. Uh, Sunday school uh, was an hour before church, usually about 10 o'clock and there would be a good number at that and uh, then service 11 and uh, <coughs> there would be an evening service as well at 7 o'clock. Mm. So it got plenty of, got plenty of religion. Okay. And, and then, of course, the, the shop in Club Jordan and your family was an integral part of the community. Yes, it, it, was, uh, it was interesting uh, uh, having a, a shopkeeper, if you like, for, for a father. Yeah, there, was a, there was a history going back to my grandfather. Uh, though I, um, the, the staff in the shop did not spoil me in any way, shape or form. They were all fairly... Uh, middle-aged people and they uh, didn't like little boys getting in behind the <laughs> counter. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, I mean you've, you've reflected on uh, your uh, of some of these things, your influences. Um, but how did these all these childhood things influence your life and your direction in life and your motivations and faith? And well the music was, it was, it was a big thing. I mean my mother uh, was very music. Both my both my parents were musical, and, and they, uh, my dad played the organ in church. Uh, in in turn, but at, at that time there were five or six organists, oh. so they had a rota. And uh, my mother uh, sang a lot of songs that she had learned in school, and I picked all these up. I had a very good memory for words. Oh. Uh, and uh, as as time went on, I was able to play hymns. I can remember uh, <laughs> one of the, the the hymns that intrigued me. I don't know which of them was the first hymn, but one about Hear the pennies dropping, listen while they fall. Everyone for Jesus, he shall have them all. And the chorus was dropping, 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 dropping. Hear the pennies fall. Everyone for Jesus, he shall have them all. And I thought this is a great incentive for giving. Uh, so I, I found uh, playing all sorts of music enjoyable, but particularly hymns. And uh, when Christian Endeavor uh, meetings came on and I was old enough, I would play it hymns on the piano there and even in the national school if the teacher had a sore hand she would get me to play the piano for the morning worship in school. Hmm. You want to hear anything more about that? <laughs> oh yes, yes. Why yes not? So we, every, every, every week, Friday, Monday to Friday we had the uh, morning prayers, we had a hymn and, uh, and, and a prayer. The, the teacher used a collect from the Book of Common Prayer, the same collect every time. Uh, she would do that on, on Mondays, Wednesdays and uh, Thursdays and the rector, the local rector would come in on Tuesday and Friday and he would have a uh, hymn and, and a different prayer but the same prayer all the time too. Mm. Uh, uh, 
was just talking to someone from the Church of Ireland today. As, as, as Methodists, we, we never saw a Methodist minister in the school. Okay. Right. Right, so different times. Then. I mean, what were relationships like between the churches in those earlier days compared to maybe now, John? Well, uh, we uh, the Church of Ireland uh, children would, would have church would learn church history mm -hmm. uh, from uh, from fifth and sixth classes while the Methodists just sat in their desks and either read their books or listened. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, you know we we uh, we all needed each other. You know for yeah. for, for social f uh, functions the, the Methodists and, and Church of Ireland gone. Now as far as the Catholic Church was concerned, I'm sorry to say that there, there was very little. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, companionship or a relation to uh, oh. ca Catholics were different. I mean, uh, we knew there were so many of them, and uh, during the wartime, when there were no cars, uh, the, the amount of bicycles that were piled up, uh, especially at the Step Road, uh, coming up to from Shinro, the Shinro Road, up the, uh, and then people's uh, horses and, and ponies and traps would be tied oh. to the railings yeah. uh, up, up near the up near the church, uh, uh, <clears throat> but we didn't know. Much of, uh, about what oh. I was. I was never in a Catholic church in Ireland before. I, I went to Germany at, at the age of twenty or so. Okay. That was the first time I was in a Catholic church. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah. And you, 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 you would feel that if you went into a church like that, people would be looking at you and wondering what yeah. you were doing. Yeah. So yeah. They'd, be, they'd be shy about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, d different times. Yeah. Well, we used to meet the, the the local curate who lived on our road, and he would say, "Good morning, children," and if he met us. Uh, and, and you know, well, that was our one. Yeah, yeah. Super. Good. Well, c can we move on maybe a, a little further into early adulthood, John? And, well, and maybe uh, you want to reflect on, uh, on uh, marriage going, going, and going, to, going to Wesley College was, of course, was okay. a big experience, you know, uh, 1950. Uh, right. And uh, the, 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 Beth, the big Methodist church, the Centenary Church, was next door to the college. Right, yeah. And uh, <coughs> Methodists would go to that, uh, of course, on a Sunday morning. And uh, we, we, we sat in the gallery, and I was just thinking about it, we, we, we occupied uh, uh, pews in the gallery, but there would be just one boy at each end of the pew, and it made me think of the pandemic, and how the people had to sit so many metres apart. It was like as if the pandemic, pandemic had come 70 years ahead of its time. But we sat there, and the uh, minister, that for the whole of my time uh, at Wesley, was Bob Livingston, Reverend R.G. Livingston. And I admired him very much. He was, he was a tall... Stay, stately, dignified man, and he spoke very clearly, and I enjoyed uh, his services. And the choir, of course, was very good and a very good organist. So the worship in, in the Centenary Church, I enjoyed. And of course, we had an evening service as well, <coughs> where if we were weren't out on leave, we would go to church then at seven o'clock, and we would sit in the front pew downstairs, or the first front, 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 front couple of pews. Uh, and then, then had, and of course, on the Sunday afternoon at Wesley, we had a, a college service oh. at three o'clock. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I was in the choir for most of that. Although I, I did get to play the organ sometimes in, in my last year in school, but we certainly got plenty of religion. Oh. Right, right. Oh. And w w what happened then after? I mean, uh, well, just a couple of months after I, I, I did my leaving, I went to work in Sligo. I had no ambitions. I, I no, I mean, I, I university. Seemed alien to me. Mm. I, I didn't. I didn't finish any sh another sort of type boarding school experience. Mm. And the, we had the shop, and I knew my dad. I, I felt my dad wanted me to to succeed him in some mm. way or other. Mm. So he, he drove me up to Sligo, and the minister, the Methodist minister there, was Hugh J. Ritchie, who was a great friend of my father's, mm. and he was like another father to me. He was a very kind man, mm. and I worked in three uh, shops owned by Methodists: Woods mm. Hardware. A woods shoe shop and goods drapery shop, oh. and by a strange coincidence, the manager of the shoe shop uh, had been in Dunmanway and he had played badminton with a woman who had become my wife many years before okay. I ever met her. Okay. <laughs> well, do you want to tell uh, tell us uh, uh, about that? Uh, about about Anne. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I was going to uh, tell you that when I got to the holiday in Sligo. Okay. Uh, oh well, sure. Tell us. Uh, yeah. Well. Uh, well, I came back. I came back to uh, Clark Jordan about two and a half years after being in Sligo, and I worked in Clark Jordan for six years. And of course, there were lots of uh, things. There were, there were games we, we played. We even had a rugby, a rugby club for a while, uh, um, called the YMCA Rugby Club, and we played lots of table tennis. 
uh, and uh, we had uh, different social functions mm. and, and I had girlfriends uh, and uh, one of the things that came up, uh, 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 Harold Good in, was in Waterford uh, uh, at the time and he um, advertised uh, there are places on, on a trip to Slot Scotland, he wanted to make up the numbers mm. uh, and my mum said uh, would you, would, you, would you like to go to that? And I said, my mother was very good at encouraging me to do different oh. things. So uh, I replied to the advertisement and uh, met the, the, the Waterford people in uh, Abbey Street, Methodist Church, and we sailed over, the, we sailed to, to Scotland. And, uh, and then during the time there, um, I got to know Anne. She was very fond of, of music and she uh, was uh, intrigued by me playing the piano and stuff like that. <clears throat> she had a great Methodist background. Her, she was a cousin of the Reverend Alan Mara, and uh, her granduncle William Mara was president of the South African Methodist Church. I have a nice photograph of him. <laughs> and so I'm very grateful to Harold Good for, for bringing us to, together. <laughs> he, he was courting his own wife to be at that time, also. So we had great fun. Great, and, and uh I forgot, to, I forgot to say that in the middle of all that, I went, I left Clark Jordan and went to work in Ross Grade. Okay. Uh, Shaw's uh, set up on the, 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 the department store, in, you, know, you know it of course, in, yeah. in Ross Grade, yeah. and they were looking for staff. And I was interviewed by Mervyn Shaw in the back of his Jaguar car on the 10th Street. So I was there for four years. Oh. And I learned more, I learned, certainly learned, learned more in the four years in Shaw's than I did in the six years of, it was in Clark Jordan. Right, right, okay. Because uh, okay. Shaw's had a higher standard of business. Right. So uh, when I came back, uh, um, yes, I, 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 no, I got married in, in 66. I was, I was working in Shaw's from 1964 to 1968. Uh, but uh, Anna and I got married in, in 1966. Uh, so she was living in, in Clark Jordan. I was commuting to Rasgrave. Then I, came, uh, I got the opportunity to take over the business in 1968. And uh, my, with my experience uh, working in shows and uh, also with the help of a, a Methodist businessman in Yall called Jack Brooks, uh, I uh, applied to Busgraves of Cork for the franchise, the VG franchise. It was, okay. uh, it was um, a gross, self-service grocery yeah. business. And uh, Musgraves came and gave me designs for the build building. And okay. I, went, I went to a local uh, builder, carpenter, and I said, uh, Tommy, or Danny, it was Danny O'Brien. I said, I, well, I have no money, Danny. I can pay you so much a week. Right, right. <laughs> and so Danny, very kindly, he got a, a plumber in and he got a couple of other men in and they, they, they dismantled the old shop and put right. in all new fixtures and fittings and woodwork and floors and tiles and everything like that. Oh, yeah. And that was 68. Oh. And I, uh, do you want me to go on anymore? Oh, yes, yeah, whatever you want to say there. Sure. I'll never forget the first morning that we opened as, as a food market. It was a wet Friday morning yeah. and nobody appeared for about half, well, there were staff all right, but I had no customers for half an hour. Right. <laughs> and the first customer bought a two shilling plastic bucket. <laughs> it's wonderful, <laughs> isn't it, the way things like that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, that that uh, you know, the, uh, our children, our first, our first born, uh, Malcolm was born at that time. Then we had right. we had three more, and and of course, minded the house and minded the children most of the time. But as time went on, Anne was very good at business herself. Right. She did worked in the office. She was very good at computers, and she loved uh, serving children. I have the mm -hmm. picture in my mind of her leaning over the counter of sweets and asking the children what sweets, you know, especially if they were coming. Uh, having been at, down at the Church of Ireland for some function or other, and all came in as a, in a gang right, uh, yeah. and wanted all wanted sweets at the same time. You know, it was it was lovely. But uh, uh, um, my fellow business people in Clark Jordan were, were always all very very friendly, and the customers. I love the customers. You know what I'm saying? I, I love meeting people. You know who remember yeah. the old days. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. And uh, and so your family. Uh, when they all eventually came along, they came along. Yes, and yes. Um, in 1975 yes. was the centenary of the of the church uh, in Clark Jordan, the Methodist right. Church. Right. Uh, so we had a great celebration. Dudley Cooney was the minister at that time, and the manse was next door to the shop. Mm. So we saw a lot of him, and uh, he used to come in to, after his mother died. He used to come in and have lunch with us on a Sunday quite often. Uh, and uh, for the centenary, we had a 
uh, a, a, a sort of an ecumenical celebration in Gertine College. Right. Because uh, the Methodists in Tapti Orton were heavily involved in the start of Gertine. Ted Armitage, yes. my father's brother, was the man who discovered the farm that was mm. for sale and, and, and brought it to the attention of the Methodist officials. Mm. And then the, work, the farming men from Tapti Orton went down to, to, to reap the first harvest in mm. Gertine, which was a big thing. So we were, we were always very interested in, in Gertine. And then we had a, a broadcast service on the Sunday morning uh, in August, I think it was, uh, 75, and the Stuart Armitage, the Reverend Stuart Armitage, who of course it would, would be a, a, an, a, an uncle of Herbert's. Oh, yeah. uh, he preached at, uh, at yeah. that service. And uh, in the evening we had a uh, uh, guest speaker, uh, uh, the Reverend, uh, Dr. Ernest Walton, the, the Nobel Prize winner. Whose father was born in Tapdown. Okay, yes. Yeah. So uh, that, that was, uh, and, 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 and uh, Professor Walton spoke, spoke and I, I had, it was new, very newly fangled with a tape recorder, and I recorded uh, his address as well, hmm. uh, which uh, was availed of by the, by the people in the eco village uh, much later. Right. Right. Um, in, in all of this, uh, Activity and uh, I mean music has been central to you. Um, it, w w when did you first start playing the organ in the in the church? And, oh, uh, <laughs> I, 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 my dad very kind, uh, kindly allowed me to take his place right, playing sorry. the organ. We had an old pedal organ uh, at, at, at first, and we didn't get an elect electronic organ until Tom Kingston came. And Tom and Joy Armitage and I went to somewhere in Cork, I think it was. To, to buy an organ, it was only about 450 euros at that time. Uh, but uh, uh, one by one, the existing organists passed away for one reason or other, uh, and uh, I, I, Joy Armitage and, and I shared it for, for, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, I played. I have I have a list of about 70 churches that I played for services. <laughs> right, right, times around right. the country, right, Methodist, right. Church of Ireland, Presbyterian, Catholic, right. yeah, yeah, and and uh, I must say this. I, 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 see, I was I wasn't athletic. I I I I, I, I like games. I might like would join in games, all right, but I yeah. wasn't good at. It. I wasn't a good runner or anything like that. And the music made up for that. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> it, and of course, more widely than the church as well. I mean, wh wh when did the community choir begin? Or well, uh, yes, there was, uh, in the, uh, we, we did have small Methodist choirs, just of our own people, yeah. you know, up th through the years, you know, for yeah. harvest yeah. or Christmas. But in the 1990s, I got the idea of advertising for more members, yeah. and we got a mixture of people, and we had a, so we formed an ecumenical choir. And I got yeah. great encouragement from the local rector, Donald Atkinson, and from the parish priest, Canon White, yeah. and we sang in, in, in their churches as well, and that was most enjoyable. Brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, just when we're on that, uh, do you want to say anything about uh, how ecumenical relations are now compared to when you were growing up, what you mentioned earlier, or, or community relations? Uh, well, they're, they're, they're good, of course. In yeah. This last two years with the, with the pandemic yeah. has been very strange. You know, yeah, we've been yeah. cut off very much from, from yeah. each other. But, yeah. uh, I mean, I, 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 um, as far as... Uh, People attending church, you know, it, it's it's uh, disappointing not to see more people coming, mm -hmm. of, of, of whatever denomination. Yeah, uh, you know, when I was a kid, the church would be nearly full. Yeah, uh, full pews of families like the Rafes and, uh, and the Armitages of Deer Park and the Shannon people, uh, and the Lissadonna people and the and the Gertavala people. You know, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. great. Uh, nowadays, uh, uh, well. I don't know exactly how to answer that question. Yeah, no, as far, as far, as far, as as it, well, I was I was also maybe thinking of in terms of community yeah. relations. Yeah. Um, that uh, it, it's very different than when you, you said earlier about your earlier life that yeah. people get on better or mix more. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. Well. Uh, the eco village people now uh, disappointed me because uh, they're they're very they're a big asset to the community in many ways, but they don't uh, they don't come to, to church, uh, right. and, and I, I always wish I could. Uh, I mean, the window the, some of them will come and sing in the choir, all right. right, right. But uh, yeah. Uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. 
I was going, I was going to say that this, uh, yeah, I didn't say anything about being a local preacher. Okay, uh, yes, uh, yes. But, uh, should have been asking about that. <laughs> no, well, uh, uh, Derek Ritchie and Chris Walpole in Burr gave me a lot of, of help with that. And, and uh, you know, and I studied and, and passed the exams. I, most of the local preachers were older. Uh, Arthur Guest, that would be uh, Clifford's grandfather, and George Shepherd, Adrian Shepherd's father, uh, Leslie, Sylvia's father. They, uh, they, they were all, uh, and, my, and my dad and, and his brother Ted. But they were all active, you know, but they were getting on. And the only person near my age was James, my cousin James in Boris King. Huh. You know, and uh, so I, I, I was very glad to, to I, don't, I never, I never felt very happy preaching, you know. <laughs> I, take right. it, I take it seriously and I, yeah. and, and I like to do it well. And I, mm. I uh, but uh, that, I'm glad to uh, be able to, I mean, I did take services in different places. I was as far, I was in Cork, I was in uh, Newton Ireland, I took a service in Newton Ireland and that was, but a big, a, quite a big church in Regent, mm. Regent Street, Newton Irish, and it was full. Right. <laughs> and I looked down at this sea of faces. <laughs> and and uh, I'd taken services in Carlo and in Waterford and uh, uh, Adair. Uh, and, and, you know, and, and it's lovely to meet the people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, uh, and I suppose I just get the sense from you of, of the privilege that uh, you, you take with, with preaching there that if, if, uh, to not feel entirely uh, relaxed about it is to, is to take it seriously and, and to take that responsibility seriously. Um, so, um, and I mean, you, I, I think it's fair to say you're a people person, John, and, and uh, you know, if, if people across the community uh, c connect with you and recognise uh, the, the, the blessing of, of your different aspects of commitment well, to I, the community. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, surprised and amazed really the way people are coming up to me and telling me they've heard of them going away mm -hmm. and that they're sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, it, does, it does make me feel a little bit guilty you know, but, but, but uh, I, I know this uh, you know, I think I feel that there is there's something for me to do in Cork. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, uh, my my son has a lovely family down there whom I see very very little of yes, know, compared yes. compared with the rest of my family. Because yeah. he told me about this place, Laps Court, uh -huh. and uh, yeah. um, it's it, it's it's uh, it's not only a very attractive place, but it's also very reasonable. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I just but, hope I, I hope I last a few years. Oh yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I think we all come with uh, two as two things in mind, John. That on the one hand, like we are, and the community in in Clock Jordan is very sorry to to, to see you move from yeah. Clock Jordan, and uh, you're you're uh, such a, an integral part of of the community, um, and so I think that's very genuine that that people are. Or sorry to see you, you move on, and yet the other part of it is you know it, 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 you you have to do what what is right and good for for, for yourself and your stage of life and uh, and so we, we, please know that we, we we fully respect that even while we say that we're sorry you're going so um, well they, they told me in the last court that it's really for court people <laughs> and I said well I've had. One wife from Dunmanry and a second wife born in Bandon. <laughs> and uh, my, my grandfather got married in Cove. <laughs> and uh, I have two more uncles that, were, that had Cork wives. So I think that nearly entitles me to be called a Cork person. <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, well, that's, that's, that's about it. Um, do you have any more, uh, or just sort of closing reflections, um, just in terms of life and all that it throws up? The good times and the hard times, and uh, and uh, your your approach to life. Um, uh, 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 any other reflections? Uh, well, I, I feel sorry for people who haven't got a faith, hmm. especially a faith in a, a life beyond this life. Yeah, yeah. I, I when I watch dramas on TV and and and, and, I, and people are in trouble about this, that, yeah, they have no source of help like prayer. Mm -hmm. uh, I just feel so sorry. Yeah. You know, I wish that um, we could 
uh, influence and extend the kingdom of God to these to all these people who mm. don't seem to. I don't know. I don't know whether that they don't care, but they just don't seem to have a grasp of of what the, of the of the wonderful happiness that comes mm. from mm. faith. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and that's that's powerful to hear you your heart on that too. Well, that's why I like yeah. I like to do the, the wayside pulpit because it's always a message yeah. there for, yeah. for, for, for that to make people think. I hope yeah. I hope that's the point, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, there's wonderful there are wonderful services on, on the radio uh, and, and, and television and and, and, to, and uh, people taking the trouble to, to, to watch them. Mm -hmm. uh, would you believe I was in I was at mass in Turles Cathedral last Sunday week, not, not, yeah, last Sunday week, right. uh, I have a lady, a friend down there, uh, and uh, we, 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 uh, we were having some tea outside the, the horse and jockey huh. uh, uh, hotel, yeah. right. Uh, right. Uh, and she, she was saying, what do we do, this was about six o'clock in the, I said, is there anything on in the, in the, in the, in the cathedral, huh. uh -huh. so we drove in and found there was a mass at seven o'clock, and uh, um, or Ella is her name, she, she told them, uh, the, one of the officials says that this, this, this is an elderly ch ch Church of Ireland man and he's not able to stand up too well so oh. he'll excuse him if he just stays sitting down during the <laughs> and the priest brought me down a host <laughs> I thought that was nice right right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I didn't ask uh, comment at all John on, on the loss of your your, your first wife and indeed then your, your yes, second wife uh, Do you yes, want to say anything? Uh, we, we retired in, in, in 2005 and uh, at the end of 2005 Anne had a lump in her breast and uh, she got these things chinged out and uh, gradually you know she had got chemotherapy and everything like that uh, yeah, and uh, things things uh, just deteriorated it, it, it passed to her liver and she knew she, she knew she had, hadn't much chance left but she wanted me to run a, a concert in, in the Church of Ireland uh, at that time, which we had organised, and I, I, she had organised someone to film it and everything like that, and, and I usually be disappointed if I didn't go through with that. Hmm. But uh, anyway, uh, she, you know, I was with her, I was out, the, the, two, the two of us were alone when she passed away, hmm. and uh, I sang hymns to her. Hmm. Um, poor uh, Pamela, uh, we were only married uh, three years when she got this es esophageal cancer. Right. And she was in James's hospital for treatment for that. And the surgeon said there he, he could he could operate and take out the cancer. Mm -hmm. But the operation shocked her system so much that she passed it. She, she just went unconscious mm -hmm. and, and uh, they kept her alive for seven or eight days and then mm -hmm. had to let her go. Mm -hmm. Oh. And she was lovely. Her, you know, she was she was an orphanist too. And she played in the Church of Ireland. Here. Oh. I would I, she, I, she would be walking up to the Church of Ireland to play, and I'd be coming back down to the Methodist Church with me. Right, right. She didn't like me coming in to hear her, listen to her play. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but she was a lovely person, and yeah. I, through her, I got to America three times because she's a son in Boston. Oh, okay. And I'd never have got that. Anne and I did think of going to America, but we never we never got around to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and. I mean, you've you've referred to the strength of your faith, but uh, in those times of loss, uh, the, the, you, 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 God was sustaining yeah. you. And, yeah. Well, uh, I, I, uh, I knew we'd meet again. Yeah. 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 And. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, um, in uh, as we just uh, sort of close, are there any other words for? Club Jordan, that you would, uh, <laughs> the, the community to, to hear. Uh, well, I suppose I should say, as a businessman, as I say, shop local uh, uh, and uh, persecute the, the county council to, to, to resurface the main street. <laughs> you know, um, and uh, encourage people to keep their places well. The, the, the bank, the, the old bank, for instance, it looks very bad. There's, a, there, there's some work, work planned to be done in the big store opposite the garage, uh, per, opposite Percy's, Percy's garage, and I hope that goes on. That has been a, uh, a difficult place all my life. 
Anything else? Yes. <laughs> oh, no, well, I, th I, I think we've... We could, do the pedestrian, we, we, could do the pedestrian crossing across the street somewhere, too. Oh, yes. That, you know, the traffic has increased a lot. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, elderly people now don't find it too easy. Oh. Yeah, OK. Well, who knows who could be listening to this yeah, video, yeah. John? Yes, brilliant. Uh, well, listen, John, thank you so much for uh, just being willing to, to, to share with us and we... Uh, we're, we're just thankful for this and uh, of course uh, as people are expressing personally we wish you uh, well for uh, the, the next chapter uh, ahead in, in your life and journey well I'll keep in touch anyway I'll send uh, my friends photographs of the new my, my new house <laughs> when I get the chance 